All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our media availability this afternoon with Clint Boyer, driver of the number 14 DeKalb Ford. Clint, we are going to jump into some questions and go ahead and open up the floor. Not Let me go ahead and, yeah, he's got one, go ahead. How's your car running and, and how long does it take you to get, when you first came on series, to get used to working with all the telemetry, all the information. The first thing they do when you pull in is they hook up a laptop. When is too much, when is information too much information? No, I don't think there's no you know such thing as, as uh, too much information today's day and age. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy how you can dissect every aspect of, of such a simple thing, you know, a race car going, through the uh, through the corner and, and uh, on a mile and a half racetrack, going obviously really fast. Um, you know things that I'm looking at. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to have three good teammates, and and I can look at their uh, throttle traces, their brake traces, their steering traces, and and get a pretty good indication and idea of what I you know need to do different, or maybe what we need to do different with our setup to enable me to do that. Um, you know. It's always tricky, this format, when you have to unload, you only have a 50-minute practice on Fridays and these three-day weekends. You have to be in qualifying trim. You don't get a chance to go out there and, and feel it, you know, feel it out, make sure that the thing's good, and, and you know, then bolt a set of tires on it and go make a qualifying run. you got to be fast right off the bat. I'm not very good at that. Uh, you know, i gotta got to feel it out and test the waters a little bit. Then I'll go ahead and dive off into the deep end and... That was, you know, basically what happened today. I was off a little bit today and knew that I got off, you know, um, with my throttle a little bit. Probably shouldn't have. You always know when you get off in the corner and you lift and the thing sticks and you're like, oh, and then you go back to the gas, it's way too late. Um, that's the difference between, you know, first and tenth. I mean, it really is just a fraction of a, of a split second. But uh, our cars are fast. All four of them are fast. Um, coming off a great weekend at Talladega. It was so much fun to be able to, to uh, run one, two, three, four in, in dominant fashion with our Stuart Haas cars and to be able to roll in at, you know, home to Kansas off a great run right that um, with momentum, with, uh, you know, a, a chance to stay alive in these playoffs. I mean, it's so important. Um, the stakes are high. Obviously, that's that's an adrenaline rush for a race car driver rolling into home place you want to win at more than anything. But nonetheless, uh, when you're racing for something and and you're in the hunt, um, you know it's you don't have time for any of those distractions or anything else. It's it's you know it's go time and, and the money's on the line. You got to go out there and get it. Go right here to Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Was there ever like a a chance because you guys are so busy that the four of you got together? over a beer or in a room and just busted out laughing over what you were able to do or patted each other on the back or were able to debrief it? No, and that's what's cool about Ace, you know, SHR. There is none of that. You know what I mean? There's no cocky attitudes or arrogance or anything else. I mean, it's everybody works hard. Everybody's racers. Everybody was damn proud of what we accomplished last week. But we all know that we got to continue to do that. We got to continue to get better because if we're not, the next team is. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. We, we need to bring a, a championship home to uh, to Ford that's vested uh, so, so much into, uh, you know, into their motorsports program, into Stuart Haas in particular. Um, each, you know, each and every one of us, you know, they, they invest in us. I mean, I took off. No, we didn't have time to take a beer. I was, I was in Vegas Monday, um, you know, doing ride alongs for Ford and, and, you know, taking care of their customers, all the, the dealers across the country. They had a dealer meeting out there and we were getting ride alongs and I got to cartooned in cause Eric was showing up uh, Tuesday and then Kurt was there Wednesday. So, um, it's been a busy week. I was obviously in Austin, you know, with the F1 stuff, uh, with our announcement down there and, um, got to see that for the first time and feel kind of their world, what a deal that was. And then haul up back here and get ready for Kansas city. What do you know about this racetrack at Kansas being from this area that you, that leads you to believe it's going to be a doozy this weekend? I hope it's just smooth sailing. It never is. When the stakes are high like this and everything's on the line, um, it's never easy. You know what I mean? I mean, this, look at the competition within the garage area. If you think it's going to be a cakewalk, um, you know, we have a 21-point lead or something, that, that's, that's not enough. You know, I wish we wouldn't have had trouble in Dover. We could have been having a lot of fun here and not really worried about it. Um, Eric's having a lot of fun. Chase is having a lot of fun. Everybody else is working their butts off. Um, for me, 
you know, this is a, it, it's always an opportunity to come home and have fun, but this is an opportunity for me to take care of business, um, you know, really on and off the racetrack. This is a new partnership with DeKalb and Asgro and everybody at Monsanto. Um, this is such a long time coming. I've always wanted to be in this industry. This is how I grew up. We live right here in the heartland of, of farm country. Um, you know, I got home after Vegas and Cash and I woke up before daylight and I said, hey, get your butt. He was in his PJs and I, was, I wasn't looking very good myself and uh, fresh off a night in Vegas. You know I wasn't looking very good, but we got our butts up and, and went out and scouted some deer and talked to the farmers. They're all bummed out, you know, around here. We've had so much rain and, and flooding and things like that. That. they were chomping at the bit to get in the fields and get their beans cut and I wish they get cut because I want them to make money and and I want my deer out of their bean fields <laughs> so so it was uh, it was a fun week it really is it's a special sponsor and and uh, proud to have them on board I'm gonna go to Jerry and then pass it right up in front Jerry Jordan kicking the tires on that and I just want to clarify so, so the drivers at SHR don't have egos wait I thought Tony put y'all together because y'all swagger no, I don't know about that. Um, I, I'd always, I hope I don't have an ego. If I do, come whoop my butt. You know what I mean? I, I deserve it. Um, you know, we're, we're just a lot of pride that goes into that. Um, everybody was extremely proud of our efforts last weekend. They should be. They put a lot into it. A lot, a lot goes into those races. Everybody wants to blow those off as a wild card race. And you're just going to get destroyed and everything else. Our guys went to work and made sure that we had the best chance possible because we needed that. We dug ourselves in a hole at, at Dover and, uh, you know, took care of business last weekend. If we can do that again and be solid this weekend, we'll march on into the, uh, the next round. I'm going to go right here and then we'll pass it right in the center. Uh, Ryan Black, I'm with the Manhattan Mercury. Uh, I, I want to ask Clint, I mean, we, we know that you're a big KU fan, and your jack man, Ernie Pierce, played for K-State for football. So This what's is that? a tricky situation. It, well, oh, let me finish. Uh, I guess it's <laughs> like, uh, what is your relationship like with him? And I know you guys probably don't discuss foot, football, but like, especially with basketball season getting – close up like so what's your relationship with him well chip that works for me back there uh, went to k-state um, you know half of my buddies that, that i grew up with went to k-state the other half went to ku um, obviously we kind of grew up closer to, to basketball than we did you know um, football if 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 you're a Kansan, you're, you're looking at K-State come football season and you're, you know, as soon as basketball season shows up, you're, uh, you're, you know, obviously KU all the way and, um, and rightfully so, you know, obviously living in North Carolina, that's pretty interesting being a KU fan. Um, they're awful proud of their efforts out there. My pilots got kids that are in, uh, um, school that went to Carolina and things like that. It's a lot of a lot of trash talking goes on in, in our little ring, um, but nonetheless, I'm I'm proud of everybody at, at Kansas. I mean, obviously, Ned and everybody um, with the Royals and what they've been able to do for this area in the last several years has been incredible. Um, the Chiefs and, and everything that, that uh, they're doing this year is something to be said. I mean, that, that's awesome. Being able to get that game moved to Sunday night, um, I was so happy, obviously selfishly for myself, because hopefully when we get out of victory lane, we're going to march our butts right over there and watch them win that game. Um, that's a perfect world. But uh, nonetheless, we're all going over there and going to watch them take care of business. And as a follow-up to that, uh, Chris Tidwell is an Emporia yeah. native. How, how special is that to have another guy at the Cup Series from us? I mean, Emporia being a fairly small town. by Well, I mean, it's his dad worked for my dad. I mean, literally, I, I held him when he was a baby. I always remind him of that. Um, we grew up together. He, he grew up going, you know, living his dream with us, going to Lakeside Speedway, watching this racetrack being built, um, going over to I-70 Speedway. When I moved to North Carolina, he moved out there and went to the, you know, the NASCAR Technical College and, and came up through there and, um, worked at RCR over the years that I was there, went on to, uh, um, you know, to, to Penske organization and certainly lived at my house. Um, he's always around, you know, I mean, he's, he's family. So certainly very proud of, of what he's been able to accomplish in, in his career and, and, um, you know, his family and everything else. They'll be over there camping with my folks and it's just, it's the way it's always been. We'll go right here in the center and then we'll go back to Rich. Awesome. Uh, Jonathan Fiel, the racing experts uh, kind of on the topic of being back in Kansas, what would it mean to you to win here at Kansas Speedway, being that it's your home track? Well, I mean, it's, you know, so many emotions and, and so many different reasons that would be, 
you know, gratifying. I mean, obviously, uh, being home, being with family and friends and, and you know, everything that, that this area means to me. I mean, a fan following, the people that, that helped me hone my skills over there at Lakeside or I-70 Speedway. I mean, these are the guys that I raced against to, to learn, you know, what I do and, um, you know, made me the racer that I am. I mean, those are all the reasons that, you know, it'd be gratifying to win at home. All right, we're going to go in the back to Rich. Rich Colbert, Motor Racing Network. Next week, we go to Martinsville. You won yeah. there last time we were there. You got to feel pretty good about that. Do you expect the car to be as good as it was last time? Yeah, you know, and for me, um, spent a lot of time in an airplane, you know, obviously this week and a lot of time thinking and, and uh, you know, just playing out where where we're at, where we're at as a race team, where we're at as, as far as the playoffs and our opportunities ahead and, and things like that. I know that I got to take care of business this weekend at Kansas. We have to get in that, that round of eight because I think if I can do that, I've got two really good tracks for me, um, typically historically, that would be good and, and could put me in that round of four for a shot at a championship at Homestead. Um, you know, I love Phoenix out there. That's that's another good track for us. So to be honest with you, this is the one that, that my focus and, and my attention's on right now. This is a big deal. I know it is. All right, we're going to go up top. Alan Show. Alan Chope, KMBC9. How often do you think about that 2007 race with Biffle when he ran out of gas here and you were so close to the victory there? I won that race. <laughs> I remember it. He cheated us. I still think about it. And he still laughs about it. So I guess hopefully I'll get the last laugh one of these days. But yeah, I, I think about it because it was, it was what a weird deal that was. I mean, I knew what was going on. He just, he played his cards better. Well, not really better than I did. He just played his cards the best that he possibly could with the, the deck that he had because he didn't have a very damn good hand that day and uh, took care of it and, and won that race. He got the trophy, I know that. He reminds me of that. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? All right, we'll go to Bob. Bob Pockers, ESPN. What's going to be more cool this week away from this track, going to Coda yesterday or going to Arrowhead tomorrow, on Sunday? <laughs> For me, Arrowhead. <laughs> you know, it was really cool um, to be at an F1 race. You know, I don't know that any of you, if you guys have been there. I mean, obviously, selfishly, we want you here to, to sell our sport of, of NASCAR. But... For an American and a race fan, um, you know, and a motorsports fan, that's a that's a hell of an opportunity that we have to have a global presence come to our country and, and to be able to race in front of us. They packed the house. That track was awesome. That was the first thing that I saw when I pulled in the gate is my, my eyes were just like, wow, I want to race here. Not in one of them space shuttles, but I'd like to race there, um, you know, with our sport. And, and uh, I think it would be an awesome opportunity. But... Um, I'll let them do their day job. I, I met the drivers, met the team guys, the personnel, the, uh, you know, everything that, that they do, how they, you know, when you go into something like that, you want to learn. You can always learn what we can do better as with our industry. And, and man, I'm telling you, I was really, I saw a lot of things that I think that, that we could do better with in, our, in, in NASCAR. And I, I think I saw a lot of, not think, I saw a lot of things that, that I'm proud to say we do a good job of, of, of taking care of our fans and, and being, um, you know, approachable and, and conversational and, and um, you, you know, available. I, I, I think, I don't, not knocking on anything, but I think that's what's always separated our sport from any other sport in our country, um, football, baseball, whatever it is, uh, any stick and ball sport, it's always been, um, you know, the closeness that you can get to the action, the closeness that you can get to the driver, the athlete, or whatever the case may be, it's always been that, uh, that interaction that you can, you can have at a NASCAR race. So that was way cool. The Chiefs game would be cool. But, you know, honestly, I mean, the DeKalb folks are all sitting here. This is a, this is a cool opportunity for me to, to be able to, to showcase, you know, their brand and um, the awareness of the farmers around here. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better track to, to be, you know, have, have the, the brands um, to Calvin and, and everybody on board with. I mean, anywhere you look, you know, whether it's across the street or anywhere around this place, um, it's all farm country. And, and hopefully they'll be out here and, and be proud of their car on Sunday. Uh, going, going back to Emporia for, for one moment, uh, are you able to at all, you know, see people go home and, and do that kind of thing or with all the commitments that you have, is that kind of like, you know, really secondary and way off the radar? No, I was. I, like I said, I was there uh, Monday. I was in Vegas. Tuesday, I got home later that afternoon and 
And um, Wednesday we went out and, I mean, I was out there, you know, in the Flint Hills moving feeders and, and blinds and getting everything set up. So when we come back after the banquet, um, hopefully with, with a huge check, we can, we can uh, let our hair down and have a little fun out in the country. But um, for me, I mean, it was... You don't ever get to see this that this time of year. The farmers are always, you know, right in the middle of the harvest, um, you know, and they're always busy. And obviously, because of the flooding and, and stuff that we've had here, they're all sitting around chomping at the bit to get the, you know, their work done. So um, I got a chance to hang out with quite a few of them Wednesday. Took them to lunch and just kind of hung out. And go right over here on the end. Clint, uh, Greg Eckman, Kansas Public Radio. You had mentioned uh, Lakeside and I-70, and there's movement toward I-70 reopening next yeah, year. Yeah, I heard that. What are your memories of it, and what are your thoughts on that? Well, I hope they rebuild the sign first thing they do. I think that sign's legendary since I was a little kid. Uh, um, you know, always you knew you were halfway, or at least a good chunk of your, of your trip to St. Louis or anywhere else was, uh, um, you, know, you know, was was at least behind you in the rear view because of that sign. I always remember getting to that sign when you were headed, um, you know, east or anywhere else. Usually for us, it was St. Louis or something like that. As a little kid racing motorcycles and then obviously rolling in there now, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll never forget those days. We had no clue what we were doing. Um, had a, a good group of guys that built a hell of a race car and went over there and had a ton of fun the year we were over there. We really did. I'm going to go to Nate, and then we'll go. You want to talk about an action track. That was the action track. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Clint, understand that you guys don't dwell on Talladega, and that there's sort of that workmanlike approach at Stuart Haas Racing. But Stuart Haas has a chance to have four drivers in the round of eight, where no other team probably will have more than one. Is that a source of pride for you guys or is that just something is that something you'll celebrate or is that just something if that is and i don't know what is you know what i mean i mean I, I think the pride comes from you know i was telling people over there yesterday in in texas um you know where you think you guys are where i mean we're the the team to beat we're the organization uh, that's on top right now and i think there's a great deal of pride that goes with that i think there's a lot of pride that goes with the manufacturer support and help that we get from ford but that army of people that's behind those four cars and we're the only ones that have all four cars that have been in victory lane um you know and the only four that are still alive uh, with all of their cars and all of their guys all efforts are still um you know chasing a championship and that's that's pretty awesome all right we're gonna go back up top are you on the uh, mahomes bandwagon Yes, I actually have a text right here from Brett Veach that has an autographed Mahomes jersey right there that will be on my back Sunday night to Clint. It's official. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us this <laughs> afternoon.